How's it going, YouTube? It's Pilot Flam, and we are back for another video. And today we're going to be looking at our Game Week 14 preview, as well as how I did in Game Week 13. It was a very interesting game week, although I did uh, decently well, um, of like you know, decently above the average. I uh, didn't get the rank increase that we were looking for, but a uh, couple points here, a couple points there, maybe some slight decision changes here and there, and then you know, it might have been okay. Um, but hey, that's how FPO is. We only dropped 2,000 uh, ranks. We're we're still inside the top 50k. Well inside the top 50k. Um, so yeah, let's uh, take a look at how the team did. So we got 63 points overall. We used one transfer, which was um, can't remember who it was now. I believe it was to bring in a certain Tomori into the team uh, instead of uh, Angles, who was injured. Um, we didn't play him, but we want to play him for this week coming up, so that's going to be useful um, as well. Um, and uh, overall, the, the, the players that we wanted to score did score. The players that did well, or we expected to do well, did well. So let's see how it went down in terms of our picks and predictions. So, we got our handy snippet tool over here again, as we always do. And those are the predictions that we got there. So Mourinho proved me wrong uh, by scoring three goals instead of one. So they, they, they did manage to get the result, which is what I anticipated. So we get one point for the result. Arsenal end up drawing with Southampton 2-2. And it could have been 3-2 Southampton uh, by the end of it. So no points there because we predicted a win. Same for the Bournemouth Wolves game. We almost got the score right. Had Bournemouth put another goal away. But again, still Wolves coming out on top in that one. Uh, Leicester 3-1, we get the result for that. They won 2-0, getting the clean sheet. Uh, Liverpool 2-1, almost the 3-1, uh, but we still get the result point for that, so not too shabby there. Uh, we predicted a draw between Norwich and Everton, but Everton showing that they're terrible, basically. Um, and surely it's not much longer until Marco Silva gets sacked, especially if they probably lose to, um, uh, to Leicester this weekend, especially if they get hammered. Uh, which it seems like it's what's going to happen. Uh, they, they could, he could be out of a job. Uh, then we got uh, Watford 2-1 uh, over Burnley. Burnley ended up winning 3-0, so clearly I overestimated how good Watford actually are, so we didn't get much there. Uh, Man City to beat Chelsea 3-2. Uh, uh, we were close on that one, 2-1, still by the same margin, so we get one point for, for that. Um, Sheffield United 2-1 uh, in favor of Manchester United. Uh, it ended up being 3-3, so nothing there. And then 1-1 between Aston Villa and Newcastle, nothing there. Um, so overall, we only got four results right, so only four points. Our second lowest score overall. Our lowest score is coming back in game weeks uh, 8 and 9, where I believe we only got it was three results right. Um, so a pretty hard game week to predict uh, in terms of actual score lines. Uh, in terms of our... Our, our differentials and, and clean sheets here. Uh, we got Tottenham who didn't get a clean sheet, so that's unfortunate there. Uh, De Gea actually did decently well from what I remember. Um, he managed to pick up five saves, so not too shabby there. He, they did concede three, so he loses his uh, loses two points but gains additional point back, so not, not terrible for De Gea, so we'll kind of say it almost worked out as it were. Almost worked out. Um, so we'll, we'll kind of do like a half tick there, but not really uh, in that sense. Uh, Tierney, I believe he got, uh, he was involved uh, in, could have been a goal by, by Pepe. So he did play well, but uh, but he didn't get any returns. So unfortunately he did not pay off there. KDB did pay off as well as Marcus Rashford. So kind of two and a half out of five there. More like two out of five, but it's all good. It's all good. Um, so yeah. Uh, surprises of the week, um, I would say Leicester keeping a clean sheet, uh, I thought Brighton would actually do more, they didn't, benefited me a lot, as you'll see in my team, um, Liverpool kind of not really showing the explosiveness anymore, they're kind of more to win games, they're not really playing to just go gung-ho, I think they're playing a lot smarter, which is good for them, especially in, in the long term. Um, so, obviously, picking up the win is the most important thing. Arsenal continuing to struggle, and as a result, in midweek, uh, after their defeat to, I believe it's um, Eintracht Frankfurt uh, from the Bundesliga, uh, Unai Emery has been sacked, and they replaced him with the interim manager in Freddie 
Lundberg, a former Arsenal player and a, one of their uh, more renowned and, and, and greats, as it were. So it could be interesting to see if they get re rejuvenated from that uh, appointment. I don't believe he can be in for the long term yet because I don't believe he has his, like, I think it's called your, your coaching badges or whatever. Um, so it's like a different situation to how Scholzhar came in because he had been coaching before. Um, whereas Lundberg had only been like a, uh, a first-hand man, as it were. Um, next week, just how bad Everton actually are. Norwich was on a huge slump. Everton was kind of up and down, and then Norwich just comes in and just beats them convincingly. Same for Watford. Thought they were on an upward trend, and Bernie just says, nope, thank you very much. We'll take the three points and three goals at the same time. Um, Spurs showing uh, that Mourinho is clearly adapting. Obviously, I figured that this would happen. It's usually the first year, year and a half, Mourinho, is, he, he, he rejuvenates the team, he gets them where they're going, and then he starts kind of singling people out. So we'll have to see kind of how that plays out. They had a great win in the Champions League, coming back from 2-0 down to win 4-2. Um, so we'll have to see, we'll have to monitor that, because this could also uh, uh, rejuvenate Kane uh, and his form, especially with the Euros coming up as well. Um, and Sons, obviously, and Ali have, are, are obviously uh, levels above uh, what they were previously. So, definitely looking forward to that and keeping a close eye on them. Haven't brought any Spurs players yet, but we'll definitely be keeping a close eye on them. Um, and it's a weird shape that actually Mourinho plays as well. Um, he So, when they're in, in defense, he has uh, basically three center backs with like two wing backs, but when they're on attack, it's more of a more of a four where basically Aurier can just he has he just doesn't have to defend which is good because when Aurier defends he gets red cards so it kind of works out quite well and also the change for for Dyer um, as well to kind of switch things up um, obviously paid off uh, and they managed to win that scoreline uh, of midweek and then lastly City versus Chelsea obviously the big game of the week Chelsea showing like they were in complete control for the first 30 minutes and even uh, spots during the second half. But overall, City just just edges it out. Um, it's a bit worrying for City if you're uh, you know if you're a City fan. Obviously, the win is nice, but obviously not playing well still. The midfield not doing as it should do. Um, Fernandinho not playing in that holding role seems to disrupt the team quite a bit, and I think they miss him quite a bit. Um, so we'll have to kind of see how they set up, uh, especially away to Newcastle, who was the uh, one team to give them their one loss. Uh, it was like one or two losses. Um, it was one of them at least uh, last season uh, when they were on that hot streak. Um, and they are obviously coming off a defeat uh, at Aston Villa, so maybe something to prove uh, on their way back home. So let's run through how the team did. So, like I said, we had 63 points overall. We used the one transfer to, for Tomori. It was just a transfer. We just felt like using it because Tomori was going up for price, which he ended up doing eventually. Um, but yeah, so we had to play Ramsdale over Henderson because Henderson could not play uh, against United because he's uh, from United. He's just on loan. So Ramsdale got us two points. Nothing really too much there. Kind of disappointing for Bournemouth again. Rico getting zero points. Disappointing again. You know, not 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 great. There's uh, Bournemouth looking like they're going back into a slump, which isn't something we want to see, considering their players are actually priced. Uh, Pereira and Soyuncu getting clean sheets. Pereira getting a getting a bonus point as well. Uh, looking good, looking good. They, you know, they're getting clean sheets. Uh, four clean sheets out of the last four, with even better fixtures to come. Everton, Watford, Aston Villa, and Norwich all winnable and clean sheetable fixtures. Um, so. I think they're looking very, very strong, very, very strong, especially with the likes of we'll pair Jamie Vardy with this, um, you know, a penalty that had to be retaken, uh, which was quite fortunate because if he had had a missed penalty, that would have been bad. He would have gotten assists for it, but obviously getting up with more points than uh, than what we had anticipated after he missed the penalty. Um, again, getting three points, you know, gets a clean sheet, but obviously we want to, we expect a little bit more. We're going to run him out this week as well. Not sure if he's going to be the one to go down, but he is an enabler. Uh, he is a way to Man United. Um, could potentially nick a goal. Um, I wouldn't mind McGinn scoring against uh, against my club as long as we win. That's all that matters. That's kind of the hope there. A nice 2-1 win for United would probably be the, uh, a good thing for us, I would think. Uh, Mason Mount, obviously, uh, playing on the bench. Not sure why he didn't start. I guess he was playing more of a... 4-3-3 to kind of match City shape in, 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 for, for Lampard's regard there. 
Um, so Pulisic is obviously playing as well. Um, Mount will almost certainly play this week. They kind of missed his uh, his end product, as it were, the, like the final killer pass or the final final ball um, that basically puts people in at like a really dangerous scenario. So we should see him start this week. De Bruyne, obviously in the City game scoring. Sterling, disappointing again if we look at his run that we've had so far. Um, obviously doing quite well over this spell, uh, but not so much over the last three games. Uh, you know, one point versus Southampton. Two points versus Liverpool, two points versus Chelsea. Not really playing how how we wanted to play. And Newcastle away, not an easy task, especially the way they play. Burnley away isn't great either. And then they have uh, some some tough fixtures here as well. And even Wolves could be tricky. Sheffield United. All of these games look like not a crazy amount of goals in them, except barring maybe the Arsenal game and like the Newcastle game. But um, you know, it could be difficult, could be looking to, to, to potentially get Sterling out, especially if he starts dropping below his base price at 12 million, maybe go for a, a cheaper option, like a son, as an example, at Spurs. Sadio Mane getting goal for himself. Uh, he's done very well in his last six fixtures, obviously only the two points versus United, but uh, doing quite well, and his fixtures obviously are very good. Uh, the only thing is we have a blank in game week 18. He's our only Liverpool player, so that's the only one we have to worry about. And we can always just play someone like Lundstrom, who has a very good fixture in game week 18. Uh, Brighton away should do quite well there and has a good run of fixtures pretty much after. Like, the Wolves game is the only one I'm kind of a bit iffy about. The rest of them should be quite straightforward for Sheffield United. And then... Obviously, the big news that uh, came out after the Champions League this week was that Tammy Abraham, who didn't score in the Man City game, uh, he got injured. He has a hip injury. He has an unknown return date and his red flag. Uh, Lampard confirmed today that he will not participate in the West Ham game. Um, so we're going to have to look for options to pay, potentially replace him. We bought him at $7.5 million, so we'll check that out when we go to the transfers and we'll see how much money we actually have and what things we can do further down the road. And on the bench, we had Henderson obviously getting zero because he played against Manchester United. We had Lundstrom with three points. Could have potentially got our rank, uh, uh, potentially a small green arrow. Um, you know, Greenwood obviously coming on, getting five points. You know, obviously, you know, doing doing quite well for himself. Uh, could have played him over, over, over. Well, he wouldn't have came in uh, for for Rico. He would have only been Lundstrom or Tamori. But yeah, could have could have had a slightly better uh, game week. You know, but obviously not expecting Greenwood to come on and score every week or you know do what he uh, get an assist or whatever. So and then Tamori getting the one point, but we just brought him in. We weren't going to play him anyway because it was Gate City. So yeah, um, overall a, a, a pretty, pretty, pretty solid game week. Um, you know, the, the only thing that I have to, to kind of figure out now is, you know, are we sticking with the Bournemouth assets? Like, you know, can I trust rotating, you know, Ramsdale with Henderson? You know, I he's got Tottenham away this week, so obviously we're definitely not playing him anything. Crystal Palace away, you know, we could play him. We could play him in that. Let's if we look at what Henderson has for 15. He has Newcastle at home, so we will definitely be playing. We're playing Henderson this week. We're playing him in this game, this game, this game. Game week 18. Let's see what uh, what Ramsdale has. Burnley at home. So so maybe you know it, it may just be he just he's just a placeholder. Um, you know we'll have to we'll have to kind of figure it out. Um, but uh, typically when Bournemouth get sh um, you know shot on, they usually make a lot of saves. They've been uncharacteristically conceding quite a few goals. So we'll have to kind of. Keep an eye on that as we pay attention to how Bournemouth shape up, especially over a busy Christmas period, which is definitely a bonus, and I can't wait for it as well. Now, if we go to the fixtures for this week, we have the early fixture, Newcastle versus Man City, also going to be covered on True Geordie's channel, and I'm going to watch that as well. So that should be interesting too. They're covering the the first game and the, uh, the three o'clock kickoffs in UK time as well. So be sure to check those out. I like watching them. It's just a little little shout out of, of a content creator that I like a lot. Um, so yeah, Newcastle, Man City. Do I see Man City winning this game? I mean, they should win this game. Um, you know, Newcastle is uh, quite uh, quite poor. Um, they they can't really score, even though. 
they they have you know chances where they have their strikers in on a two v two three v three situation, but Almiron and uh, Joe Linton just don't seem to be connecting like they should be. Um, the one player that they have that is dangerous, especially on the counterattack, is Saint Maximin. So they just have to find that last bit of quality in order to get that get that through. Um, so I'm gonna bring the old notepad over here. Uh, I think that. Uh, should City keep a clean sheet? I don't think City will keep a clean sheet. And there's an annoying little fly that's flying around my desk, which I need to get rid of. Um, but City, I don't think City will keep a clean sheet, but I do think they'll score uh, a decent amount because Newcastle is just rubbish. I see City winning this one 3 1. Burnley Crystal Palace. Burnley now at home versus Palace. Palace have kind of slumped back down a little bit um, from their early game, early like season form, especially the first four game weeks. Um, I see this being a close contest. I'm going to say that Burnley wins this one 2-1, especially coming off a very solid win, especially over um, over uh, over Watford in, in the last week. Chelsea versus West Ham. This should be pretty straightforward. West Ham can't stop conceding goals. Um, they can hardly score goals as well, um, unless the team's just literally asleep, which Spurs more or less were. And if they kind of have to get a bit lucky, um, Chelsea's defense obviously better than Spurs' defense, even though they do concede as well. But I see Chelsea getting a clean sheet here. Um, I'm going to say 3 0. Should be uh, pretty straightforward there. Liverpool versus Brighton. Now, I think this is going to be a, a pretty easy clean sheet opportunity for Liverpool. Um, I see 2 0 being the victory because Brighton typically don't let in a crazy amount of goals, but Liverpool is not scoring a crazy amount of goals at the moment. Um, so I think a 2-0 victory is fair. I think they will get the clean sheet as well. Um, they haven't had a clean sheet uh, for uh, uh, or as many as they've had since uh, in last season where they had, I believe it was 17 or 19 clean sheets. It was, it was somewhere in the high teens uh, for, um, for clean sheets. Spurs going up against Bournemouth. Uh, I don't think Spurs will keep a clean sheet. I think Bournemouth will score at least uh, one. But I think Spurs will, do, uh, will win in a... Uh, 2-1 uh, victory. Um, I think that uh, away from home, they're probably going to end up being more or less about the same as they are at home. Um, I just think Bournemouth, when they go up against the, the better teams, they, 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 they kind of raise a little bit. I still think Spurs will be too much for them. I think 2-1 is a fair result. Uh, Southampton is rubbish. Watford is probably not as rubbish. I think Watford should win this game 2-1. As well, not much saying there. Arsenal obviously just sacked in their manager. Um, Norwich uh, coming off a 2 0 win could be could be an interesting contest. But I think I think Arsenal, the the team they, they haven't been playing for the manager the last few weeks, so their form has kind of dropped quite significantly. I think that this week they will be playing for the manager. Go away, fly. Um, and they'll be playing for Lundberg, and they'll have a point to prove, and they'll have a you know. A rejuvenated sense of, of how to play uh, how to play the Arsenal way as it were so uh, I think Arsenal will concede but I think they'll win 3-1 Wolves versus Sheffield United now this is an interesting contest I've kind of flip-flopped back and forward in my head of which way this will go um, I think Sheffield United are very good defensively they're also uh, pretty good offensively as well Wolves uh, can pack their defense quite quite nicely they're a lot more negative than Sheffield United are in my opinion um, they play more of a counter-attacking style, where Sheffield United are probably going to come out and try to play football here. Will that be their undoing? I'm not too sure. I'm going to sit on the fence here, and I'm going to go 2-2 uh, between the two teams. Leicester versus Everton. Everton couldn't even score against Norwich. Leicester's defense is better than Norwich's is. So I think uh, Leicester is just going to win this 3-0. And then Manchester United versus Aston Villa. I think, as I said before, a 2-1 victory for Man United is what is required here man united obviously at home um you know not doing good midweek but we also rested pretty much everyone um for this game so i'm gonna go with a 2-1 victory for united um hopefully mcginn gets the one goal for aston villa that would be quite nice and then we go to our clean sheet so we have chelsea as the clean sheet no surprises there west ham can't stop conceding goals and when they do concede goals they kind of just crack under the pressure and don't really do too much so uh, yeah, it's gonna be gonna be quite easy for uh, for Chelsea this week, I, I I believe. And then if we look at 
in goal, I've picked uh, Patricio because the reason being is I think that w Wolves are going to be the more defensive team. I think that even though he will concede, I still think he'll get a lot of save points. And in the in the event that Sheffield United's quality or like the final third quality isn't there, I think he could be a good pick save wise. So you could see potentially. Um, you know, where they do concede two goals, and he still ends up with three to four points based on the number of saves he does make. Um, another good shout, obviously, is uh, either the Chelsea or the Liverpool uh, goalkeepers, um, or even Schmeichel for Leicester. I'm going to go with Patricio just because he's a bit of a wild card here, and we like interesting picks as well. If we move on to our defender for the week, we picked Tomori, obviously getting a clean sheet. Could potentially have attacking returns because West Ham are just straight awful uh they can't Pellegrini has never been able to keep a side uh defensively sound uh so I think it's pretty pretty no-brainer there especially when he's also going to keep a clean sheet as well and he almost actually scored against City as well uh just pushing his uh effort wide in midfield I think Martial is going to have to be the man this week because in order for United to score goals it's going to be have to be up to him to make make things happen Rashford obviously his form continues to skyrocket Martial is going to have to follow in trends here he, he last game at home they he got an assist uh two assists um so maybe he's the man to set it up and potentially get a goal for them as well so i think marshall is a good pick there and of course we got to have harry kane his forms on the up and up uh scored midweek scored on the weekend gone perfect game for him to go and score a hat-trick versus bournemouth Will he score a hat-trick? We'll have to see. I don't have a person in my team. I'm kind of worried of him this week because he could do some serious damage, even though Bournemouth does play up to their team uh, that they're going up against. They, they play to their opponent. I still think Kane can be quite dangerous uh, in this game, uh, especially since a lot of the focal points are going to go through him, and they're going to be uh, urging him to score more goals, get his confidence up. And Mourinho seems to have brought new life in the Spurs, so they could be scoring from any angle. So don't know which Spurs player to bring in because of uh, who's scoring the most. So yeah, that's going to be my predictions for the week. Um, some of them obviously not, uh, you know, not the greatest uh, greatest picks like Patricia as an example, but I like fun picks, so it's fine. In terms of transfers for this week, so we've already made one transfer. We've got... Uh, Point eight remaining in the bank. We brought in Jimenez because it makes the most sense, even though he does counteract um, our goalkeeper. Um, but like I said, I don't think both either teams are going to keep a clean sheet anyway. Um, I think Jimenez is the best uh, option to bring in among all the strikers. Um, he seems to be the one that's going to actually do anything for Wolves in terms of going forward. Um, so we brought him in temporarily. Uh, he could be on his way out next week if Abraham's Fit because Chelsea's fixtures, as we can see, are quite good. If we look at Wolves' fixtures, they're decent for the next two games. Uh, you know, uh, you know, two games afterwards. So West Ham at home is obviously a great game. Uh, Brighton uh, away is a great game. Uh, but then obviously Tottenham at home could be bad. Norwich away is a decent fixture, but it's mixed in with City and Liverpool. So who knows? I mean, Wolves is form has slowly uh, gotten better over the, the, the season, um, even with Europa League, so they're, 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 they're doing all right for themselves, I would think. Um, so that's kind of a, what the thought process was there. I anticipate that Abraham will go down tonight, as Jimenez will also go up tonight as well, so that's also another reason why I did it. And I also think that by the time um, the weekend rolls around, which it seems like it may be a one-week thing, uh, for Abraham, uh, they probably don't want to risk him uh, getting re-injured by playing him in midweek. So he's probably going to miss this game week on the weekend and their game versus, I'm spacing out who it was, Aston Villa at home uh, potentially as well. And they'll probably have him ready back because it seems like it's just really bruised uh, back for the Everton game. So, um, and we'll have to see because even if he does say he's back midweek, they might not play him. They might only put him on the bench as well. So we need a bit more information. But I think Abraham will probably go down twice, uh, which will drop him down to 7.8. And if I don't sell him before that, I get the price rise on Jimenez because it's a, just, it benefits me. And if I could afford the price drop on Abraham, but I wouldn't have anyone to play in his place because I need to play someone there um, because the rest of my options aren't great, um, as we'll see in a second. 
in terms of our value, um, we're looking at uh, we got uh, Henderson 0.1 above what he was before. Ramsdale we can sell for 0.1 and he'll be and, and that's good for us. Uh, Rico we got a 0.1 value on a Pereira we finally have him at a 0.1 value. So Anshu's obviously done amazing things. Uh, Lundstrom's Lundstrom and we ain't getting rid of him the entire season. Um, in the game we have 0.1 value. Tomorrow we have 0.1 value. Uh, Mane obviously getting some value. Sterling is back down to what he was before. Uh, De Bruyne is almost back down to what we bought him for. Uh, Mount is only 0.1 above what he was before. I believe he went down from 6.8, which is fine because we're going to keep him anyway. Uh, we, we've seen Lampard make a one slip up as in the City game of not playing him and see what happens because he's, he's very crucial to the team. Vardy's Vardy. Uh, Greenwood is just... Uh, he's just gone down, but that's just because he hasn't played as much, and he's just a filler there anyway. And then Jimenez is supposedly going up tonight as well, so we have some decent value in the team. So potentially we, we can look for, so like next week, we could potentially get rid of uh, Sterling if he doesn't perform, and then bring in um, bring Abraham back in once we have two free transfers. We could do a bunch of different things. We could potentially swap Sterling, get a cheaper midfielder, and bring in Kane. We could do something like that. Um, we could do uh, potentially, uh, uh, you know, buff up the midfield even more, um, or, or, or spread it out a little more. So maybe get rid of McGinn, Sterling, and then bring in maybe two eight to ten million uh, midfielders or there you know you know what I'm talking about something something like that so hypothetically as an example let's say if we did want to bring in Kane and let's say Abraham's out longer than we expected we could bring in Kane and we could bring in a cheaper midfielder which uh, could be could be somebody I mean we have McGinn Maybe maybe Daniel James, maybe Cantwell back in just as a placeholder. Um, I would say Yarmolenko if they were doing well, but they're not at the moment. Um, you know, we'll have to we'll have to kind of see there. We'll have to kind of see. Maybe we bring in Son and we bring in somebody uh, cheaper up front. Uh, so we bring in we add Son, get rid of Greenwood, bring in somebody who's seven million ish up front. Let's say if it's a long term injury, as an example. Uh, we could bring in Batshuayi, I believe, who is uh, no, Chelsea. We could bring in Batshuayi, who's 6.6, .6, uh, as just a temporary replacement for the time being. And if he is out for long term, that means he's going to drop in price. Um, so that could be something that we do temporarily. But again, we'll have to see. That's just this is just thinking out loud, not something that I'm necessarily entertained, but it's something that is. Uh, a useful talking point as well. So if we look at the team for this week, this is kind of how we line up here. So we have Henderson uh, away to Wolves. We have Tomori uh, and Mount at home to West Ham. Pereira and Soyuncu in the back line at home to Everton as well as Vardy as our captain at home to Everton. We have McGinn away to Manchester United. De Bruyne and Sterling in the midfield away to Newcastle. We have Mane at home as a vice captain versus Brighton. And we have Jimenez obviously slotting in there as well. We're playing Henderson over Ramsdale because I don't see Ramsdale keeping a clean sheet versus Spurs. And neither do I keep uh, see Henderson keeping a clean sheet uh, away to Wolves. However, I do think that Henderson could be uh, more likely to keep a clean sheet considering the chances Wolves get aren't as much as the chances that Spurs are definitely going to get. Um, I think the Sheffield United's defense is obviously way better than Bournemouth's defense, uh, hence why Rico is third sub on the bench. Um, and obviously it sucks that H Jimenez is up against uh, you know Henderson, but um, it is what it is. If there's going to be a likely candidate to score versus Henderson, it will be Jimenez. So something that might be nice is maybe Jimenez gets a goal, you know, Henderson loses a clean sheet, but they get a lot of save points from all the other people, and Jimenez gets that one goal, and then looks really good in the game, and then it gets high bonus points, and that'd be quite nice. Uh, we have Lundstrom as our first sub, uh, Greenwood as our second sub, and Rico as our third. Um, we put Greenwood over Rico just because I don't think Rico's going to do anything versus Spurs, and their form is shown that they're not very good defensively. Um, even though they do step up against their team, but I still think Greenwood is better because he, he, he seems to be getting a little bit more minutes off the bench. Lundstrom we keep uh, first up because he's Lundstrom and he's the god of FPL. 
Um, decision for captains. Um, I think it's only right that I keep Jamie Vardy as the captain. I mean, he just can't stop scoring. Um, like the returns in the last six game weeks, he's only blanked against Liverpool, which can't argue with him blanking against Liverpool. 12 points, 8 points, 20 points, 6 points, 12 points, 12 points. Like it's a bit ridiculous. Um, you know, can't not captain him, you know? Um, and then obviously Mane was probably the other consideration. Uh, you know, same same run of form 12 points 2 points 5 points 12 points 7 points 9 points obviously not as much but still obviously a good option there i think vardy's the the captain choice for us especially everton just straight they just they're just bad so that's how we're going to line up there um and like i said the bench kind of sets itself in my opinion is there an argument to put greenwood ahead of lundstrom no because lundstrom's the god of fpo and obviously the god of fpo is first on the bench. Um, is there an argument to put Lundstrom in over the likes of McGinn? Potentially, but if the Wolves do s score like I think they will, then obviously it hinders two players instead of one. Can Lundstrom score against Wolves? Of course he can, um, but since uh, with the us bringing in Jimenez, we kind of don't want to go two defenders versus one striker. Um, if they do get the clean sheet, and I have Lundstrom's clean sheet and a goal on the bench, it's going to suck. But we just have to hope that Tomori keeps his clean sheet and Per and Solange keep their clean sheets as well. And it just seems a bit more uh, more beneficial that way. Because Everton and West Ham, defensively and offensively, are definitely worse than Wolves. So, that's going to do it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like on the video and follow the channel if you haven't done so already. I'll be posting this up on YouTube as soon as I can. And hope you all have a good game week 14. The games are coming thick and fast. There's games midweek as well, so you have to pay attention for those. Uh, hopefully I can do the video uh, Monday or Tuesday. Um, and I may do the video for both game weeks, so maybe a longer video there. Um, so that's going to do it. Hope you all enjoy it wherever you are in the world. Have a good day, have a good night, and we'll see you all next week. Goodbye.